So today we're gonna to use a combination of strong, soft and whole wheat flour to create a blend that when combined with milk produces a beautifully soft bread roll. Now a touch of honey is gonna add just a little bit of background sweetness and that's gonna complement the toastiness of the whole wheat flour. We're gonna extend the fermentation period and that's gonna give these rolls a really mature flavor. The smell when these were baking took me right back to my local bakery when I was a kid. So the night before I'm gonna bake, around 12 hours or so before I'm gonna mix the dough, I mix up my pre-ferment. So in here I've got 170 grams of water, 1.5 grams of instant dried yeast, and 170 grams of strong white bread flour. And then we just give everything a good mix with a spoon in the jar. The mixture doesn't need to be smooth, but it's good to make sure there's no dry spots of flour. So my kitchen's around 20 degrees Celsius at night at the moment, and this is gonna sit out covered at room temperature till we're ready to bake tomorrow. Right, so it's the next day and it's been 12 hours since I mixed up the pre-ferment. Now this recipe makes 24 rolls. I'm gonna leave the details on how to scale this recipe on the blog, but you can simply halve the ingredients to make 12. Now first I'm gonna weigh out 3.5 grams of instant dried yeast. You could round this up to four grams and use conventional scales, but I prefer to use these little pocket scales so that I only use as much as I need. Now in my mixing bowl goes 579 grams of whole milk. This has got a fat content of 3.5%. Now I'm using the milk cold straight from the fridge. This is gonna drop the temperature of the dough and it's gonna to contribute to that longer fermentation period. Next up, we've got 20 grams of salt. This is gonna get a quick stir and I'm gonna set this bowl to one side while the salt dissolves. In another bowl, I'm gonna blend my flour, and it's this blend that's gonna help us get that soft crumb while we maximize a flavor. Now I'm using 40% strong bread flour, which is split between the pre-ferment and the dough. So I'm gonna put a total of 250 grams into my bowl. Now I'm also using 40% soft flour, that's 399 grams, and I'm using 20% whole wheat flour, which is 199 grams. Now the flour gets blended thoroughly in the bowl and then popped to one side. So back to our water mixture. After another quick stir to make sure that that salt is dissolved properly, I'm gonna add the yeast on the top. Now I'm adding about half of the flour that we blended and I'm gonna stir that to combine. This is gonna create the consistency that we need to make it easier to blend in the pre-ferment and the honey. Now here is that pre-ferment that we made last night and I'm gonna add 200 and 99 grams to the mixing bowl. In goes 50 grams of honey, which adds that touch of sweetness, and I promise you, it really does work well with that whole wheat flour. Now, this is all gonna get blended together to make sure that everything is well mixed. Now, you don't need to stress, it does not need to be smooth at this stage. And now we can add in the rest of the flour and bring everything together with a spoon. Once the dough becomes a bit stiff to keep working, you can wet your hand and then using a pinching motion, make sure that all of the ingredients are well mixed. We're gonna finish mixing this during the next stage. So for now, don't worry about creating a smooth dough. Just make sure there are no dry clumps of flour. Right, the bowl's gonna get covered and the dough's gonna sit out at room temperature for 30 minutes. Right, so now we're gonna give this a quick knead. Now the main purpose here is to make sure that we've mixed the dough thoroughly and not to build strength. You know, this dough is gonna ferment for several hours before we shape it, then it's gonna go on for an ambient proof, and then it's gonna continue proving in the fridge. So it has got plenty of time to build up all of the strength it needs. Plus, we really don't need a lot of strength. These rolls are gonna be supported during the proving. Plus, we've used a flour blend with a relatively low protein content because we wanna keep that crumb nice and soft. Now, when you're happy that that dough is well mixed, you can shape it into a ball. We're gonna pop it back into the bowl, cover it, and then we're gonna leave it out at room temperature once again to prove. Okay, so after an hour and a half, I'm gonna turn the dough out onto the worktop and I'm gonna perform a very quick lamination. Now in this recipe, the purpose of the lamination is to condition the dough. After we've stretched it out and brought it back into a ball, we're gonna feel an instant improvement in the texture of the dough. And it also degasses the dough, and then it lets us continue that fermentation without the dough expanding too much and climbing out of the bowl. Now once that's complete, the dough can go back into its bowl, it's gonna get covered again, and it's gonna sit out at room temperature. 
Okay, so it's been two hours since the lamination and now it's time to shape this dough. So first of all, I'm gonna take the weight of the dough and then I'm gonna divide it down by 24 so that I can weigh out the individual dough balls for accuracy and consistency, but feel free to eyeball these if you prefer. Now it's simply a case of cutting off pieces of dough off of that main mass and then weighing them out into 73 gram pieces. Next, I give all of the pieces of dough a very quick pre-shape and then as I'm working through them, the other pieces of dough have time to relax, ready for that final shape. Now I'm gonna shape the balls properly. Now you can use any technique that works for you, but I like to roll them against the worktop and then the friction helps create a nice tight ball. Now once I've rolled out a dough ball, I'm gonna place it in some fine semolina flour so that it doesn't stick to the tray. And then you wanna leave a small gap between the dough balls. We want them to touch as they prove an increase in volume. That's what's gonna give us that fluffy side after they've been baked and we kind of rip them apart. Once I've completed all of the dough balls, I just try and even up the gaps between the dough the best I can. Now you wanna make sure you use a non-stick baking tray, non-stick paper or silicon mats, just to make sure these rolls don't stick. Now I'm gonna pop these into a large bag which I slightly inflate just to stop it touching the dough. This is gonna sit out at room temperature once again to prove. And here we are an hour and a half later and as you can see, the dough is increased in volume and the dough is now touching and providing support for its neighbors. These now get covered again and they're gonna sit overnight in the fridge and we're gonna bake them off tomorrow. Now, if you were in any doubt whatsoever about what long fermentation processes can do for flavor, you will definitely be convinced when you smell these when they come out the fridge. Now, before these go into the oven, I'm gonna give them just a light dusting of whole wheat flour. Now, these are gonna bake in an oven that's been preheated to 200 and 10 degrees Celsius, that's 410 degrees Fahrenheit, and I've set it to conventional bake mode, that's with no fan. Now don't use a baking stone, you wanna slide the tray directly onto the oven shelf that's positioned on the lower third rack. These are gonna bake for seven minutes, and then I'm gonna rotate the tray 180 degrees, and then bake for another seven to eight minutes. Don't let these over bake, you want a nice light brown color. We wanna stop these from going crispy. Now, as soon as they come out, place them onto a cooling rack and then cover them with a clean kitchen cloth and just leave them to cool. Mm. Now, I know that these kind of extended baking schedules can put some people off of baking things like this, but when these come out of the fridge and you smell them right before they go into the oven, it just makes everything worth it. So even though these are simple in appearance, they're complex in flavor with a pillowy, pillowy soft texture. So the combination of flour and the milk contribute to that soft texture. But the honey, that works beautifully with the earthiness of the whole wheat flour. Now if there's even the tiniest bit of doubt in your mind about how soft these are and how flavorsome, I want you to give this recipe a go and report back to me. I really don't think you're gonna be disappointed. And don't forget, the recipe and all of the details you could possibly need are linked down in the video description. You'll also find the recipe calculator down there too. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.